Hey, Roland, will you will you promote um, Jennifer Masson if she's in the audience? I did not hear? see her at this time. Okay. I'll, I'll keep an eye out for her. Thank you. Okay, we're all set. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to the Board of Education Facilities Committee meeting. Today is Wednesday, August 24th, and the time is now 6.02 p.m. With us this evening for the Board of Education, I have um, Board of Education Chair Colin Hospin, Board of Education Member Sherelle Harris, and Board of Education Member Kara Bakey. And we have a full, um, actually, agenda this evening. We'll be going over some summer construction projects and other ideas and uh, approvals for this evening. So first order, first item actually on the agenda, which we were discussing prior to the meeting, um, we had tabled the March meeting several times because I didn't have enough people uh, to have any approvals on those. So I didn't know if any, if everybody had a chance to read March. Any questions or changes on March? No? Okay, how about for June minutes? Any corrections on June minutes? Okay, so let's approve them both, um, March and June minutes. All in favor for March and June, say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Okay, so that's unanimous on March and June minutes. Thank you guys. I also do not see any um, public comments. Do we have anyone online for public comments? No public comments? No, ma'am, there's no, no public uh, on. Okay, thank you, Roland. And with that being said, I am now gonna transfer the meeting over to Sandra Alfeoes to uh, continue the meeting tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Diana, and good evening, board members, and thank you so much for joining us. We have with us a few members of our team um, that will take us through what I hope is some exciting things that you can be a part of um, before we move it to the board. But before we begin, we would like uh, Bill Hodell, who is our director of school facilities, to give us an update on the projects that took place over the summer. We ended in June by giving you guys our to-do list. So if you guys took copious notes, you can now check off some of those items uh, as Bill goes through our um, update on the summer projects. So I'll let Bill take it away. Uh, thank you, Sandra, and good evening, everyone. Uh, yes, it's been a busy summer and the summer's not over yet. So while we are continuing the list I'm about to um, uh, share with you, uh, we still have more beyond this list as the school year starts officially next Wednesday. Uh, to start off, all the schools have been cleaned. They've been uh, sanitized, deep cleaned with the uh, appropriate cleaning agents and um, disinfectants, and they're all ready for use. Yes, some of the teachers have come back and unpacked, and we have a little bit of a messy area in certain locations. But by and large, by August 16th, we had uh, completed all the cleaning at the schools that did not have any summer programs. And by August 19th, three days later, we completed the schools that did have summer programs. I think at Cranberry, we're done a little earlier because there was a lot of construction just on the other side of the fence. Uh, so um, the custodians worked really hard this year. Um, I applaud them all. Uh, a lot of them were um, you know, working extra hours just to make sure things were done. And they really had a high competence level and they wanted to uh, deliver the space uh, very neat. Some of the schools, yes, some of the students came back such as uh, Norwalk High School and we kind of worked around that. But by and large, I applaud the whole custodial staff for what they've done this summer. 
Uh, we've also replaced all the filters. As you may have heard us uh, speak in the past, we uh, uh, went to a more high efficiency filter, either a MERV-10, they're rated in what we call MRVE, uh, MR-10 uh, and MR-13s. MR MERV-13s are the highest you can get. So all of our air handlers have been upgraded to them and there's been a recent filter replacement. In addition to that, we have the desktop style UV HEPAs, ultraviolet HEPA, and uh, they get changed, uh, the cartridge gets changed once a year. Those cartridges came in yesterday and they will be uh, installed by the start of school next week. Um, landscaping. Uh, so what we did is we went out to bid and received a proposal for enhanced landscaping. Prior to this, we were just cutting the grass within 25 feet. So I, I, I welcome you all just to drive by the schools. You don't even need to get out of your car and you'll see how much work has been done with this new program we started. Um, there has, not only has the grass been cut on a more regular basis, but all of the weeds were, were pulled out, mulch was placed, uh, more perennials and more annuals were planted. Um, there's a little neat feature at Kendall. There was a nice ground sign and they arranged the new flowers where it looks like a smiley face. Mm -hmm. So all kind of neat little uh, items like that have, have taken place in every school. And that program will continue because it's been such a large program. The principals in some cases liked it so much they enhanced even more areas like in the back or in the courtyard. So they're really looking great. And again, I encourage you all to go over and look at it. Uh, okay, not, not to interrupt you, but I just wanted to let you know that I've gotten a lot, a lot of compliments on that new project and how great the schools are looking. So well done Thank to you. everybody. Thank you. Uh, the name of the company we hired is called Love Your Home. I think we like to change the name to Love Your School. They yes. have really done a good, good job. Um, I'm glad to hear that and thank you. Uh, many schools have been painted both outside and inside. Uh, some of the areas uh, were included Roten, uh, Naramac, Wolf Pit, Fox Run, Silvermine, and the new Sono School, which is located at 46 Concord. Uh, we uh, rearranged all of the uh, painting scheme and uh, those old uh, dark um, cruddy wooden doors have now been painted in a sky blue, which really looks nice. And um, it looks bright and airy. Uh, outdoor learning spaces. You may have heard me before that uh, we've uh, started this program in the spring to do six schools, Roten, Wolf Pit, Fox Run, Naramac, Ponis and Silvermine. They are all complete. Um, we are about to put in the last touches such as the uh, um, presentation board, but they can be used starting next Wednesday, and we've already gotten some positive feedback on them as well. You might drive by and see a big white awning with blue uh, supporting beams. That is the outdoor learning space that we've created in six of these schools. Another large project, was which is still underway, is the removal of eight underground oil storage tanks. You may have heard me speak about this. Well, I'm glad to say five of the eight have been removed um, and there has been no soil contamination. Uh, we're very uh, proud to announce that. Uh, the sixth one should be removed by the end of this week and that is at Naramec Elementary. So that would leave two more um, that would, uh, which would need to be removed at Roten and Wolfpit. So uh, there again, that job is going well Two of them received above ground oil storage tanks. That's at Silvermine and at Rowayton. That project is in its finishing uh, stages. And that also will be in operation before the heating season. So um, I, I do wanna say again, four of the schools, Fox Run, Naramec, Wolf Pit and Roten, they are about to receive natural gas from Eversource. And that installation was free of charge by Eversource. Uh, so we're proud to, that we are able to partner with them to, to come up with a program like that. At Roten, and I might, you might hear me talk about Roten a lot. We've done a lot of work to Roten. 
Um, this one was probably the biggest project. Uh, one of uh, phase one of two phases, we did the asbestos abatement of the floor tile. First phase, which was on level, uh, the top level and the mid level. Uh, next season, we're going to finish the mid level and do the lower level as well. This is of the, um, again, the asbestos floor tile. We replace it with vinyl, asbestos, uh, vinyl uh, composite tile. And um, everyone is up and moved, have already moved into their classroom furniture and all the effects that the teachers come back to uh, decorate their classroom. So that program went well. Uh, Verizon Labs are set to begin. So the infrastructure has been cleared. Uh, so they're ready to start construction pretty soon during the school year in three of the schools, Ponus, West Rocks and Nathan Hale. <clears throat> so um, that would be more of a 3D lab, which is sponsored by Verizon. They create these labs all across the country. So we're pretty excited to see uh, that. I think their deadline will be the end of this calendar year at these three schools. Uh, the Sono School, uh, the former address of 46 Concord. I mentioned earlier, we painted. We also rebranded, we put signage up. So now they no longer come to a school that says Columbus that has all been erased from the school. Uh, it now says uh, Sono School. And we've also enhanced the plumbing in the bathrooms to um, accept the uh, younger grades when they uh, need a lower height toilet. Uh, we call low boys, that's the trade name. So we've altered the plumbing to uh, in some of the bathrooms to accept that. And that program will be starting next Wednesday as well. So we're really excited there too. The um, enhancement of the landscaping really looks nice at that school as well. Uh, we had some renovation projects at Tracy uh, in the library at Roten. Here we go again at Roten. We did a lot of work at Roten. The council's office was totally revamped. And Nathan Hale, since Verizon um, took over the former band room, we created a new band room uh, within a larger space. Uh, we've also revamped the master keying system. So each school now has a locked box located in or around the uh, principal. And in that box is uh, sets of keys to each one of the classroom doors. Um, they have been given a new set. And these are the spare keys that the school leader uh, themselves will maintain and issue whenever a teacher perhaps misplaced their key or needs a new one. So now we have an item, itemized mass keying system, which we've had for many years, it's just been reorganized. We've also did some lighting enhancements. <clears throat> uh, we've created uh, lighting um, enhancements again at Roten. We did uh, LED light fixtures. We took down all the fluorescent lights in the gymnasium uh, and also in the Roten auditorium and revamped them with LED lighting. So they, it's super bright in those spaces now. And I know the principal is very happy there. Uh, we also uh, created that same effect at the cafeteria at Fox Run. Uh, we've also gone to a, a floor tile that we've used uh, frequently over the years called LVT. That's short for a, a luxury vinyl tile. We recreated that at the Marvin Library and at three offices at Brian McMahon. So as opposed to looking at square uh, VCT, now we have what we call planking uh, and it's luxury vinyl tile. They make it in other uh, dimensions as well, but this is the most popular and it's really catching on. It's a low maintenance project, uh, prop, uh, uh, product. And um, you know we are installing it more and more each year. At Fox Run, we replaced two of the aging uh, original boilers, and that was paid on the Reliance Grant, 100% paid by the state. Uh, finishing touches are taking place uh, right now, and that will be up and running uh, in, by the heating season, and that too received uh, gas free from Eversource. Um, in all the girls' bathrooms and the high schools and the middle schools, for the first time ever, we installed uh, the feminine um, dispensers. 
So the uh, dispensers are up in all of these schools and the product is in there and it's free of charge. So that's something that we were asked to do. Uh, we were able to order those dispensers. They were quite uh, delayed, but we were happy that we got them in in all the high schools and middle schools. Uh, next week, uh, which is PD, uh, you may have heard a couple of months ago, there was an incident at Wolf Pit. Uh, one of the uh, students choked while he was um, uh, digesting his food and uh, a custodian jumped into action um, and gave him the Heimlich maneuver and really revamped the kid and you know his spirits were up and uh, he did go to the hospital but he didn't really need medical care. But nonetheless, uh, next Tuesday, which is PD for the district, we are bringing in a certain group to train all the custodians on AED and CPR just in case that um, this might be needed elsewhere. So that's just a snapshot into the summer projects that uh, we've done over the past couple of weeks. Uh, we're still going strong. There's a lot more to do and we will continue along this path. Thank you. Do we have any questions for Bill? I actually do have one question. I don't know if it's for Bill, or for um, anyone? Yeah. yeah. So I'm not sure. Maybe you can answer it. Sure. Answer it um, so the um, sanitary supply dispensers mm -hmm. that are now finally in all of the girls' rooms at the schools, what's the plan for making sure that those are stocked? We, we have a year's worth already in stock, like on hand. Okay. And, and then as we start to go down halfway, we'll keep restocking. So we have that centralized. And that's and the custodians. Actually, yeah, um, the custodians will restock it the same way that we restock toilet paper okay. and um, hand napkins and all the other items that we have as regular um, supplies, stockable items that we put in the bathrooms. Correct. Okay. Great. But we Thank have you. plenty of products, which is what we were worried about at first. It took us quite a while to just get the dispensers because mm -hmm. of the, the supply chain. Got it. Okay. And with that also, um, I know parents were concerned about the bat, not all bathrooms being open in the high school. Have we had any discussions on those? Um, well, the end of last year, we had um, instructed principals to not lock bathrooms. So we'll remind them again. And thank you for bringing that up. We'll remind them with this new school year to make sure that students have access to the different restrooms. And if we need to increase, you know, I want to be fair to principals because maybe it's because they didn't have somebody on duty or there was something, but so that we're supporting them in different ways so that we're actually able to keep the restrooms open. Okay, thank you. So I'll bring yeah, that just, up. Yeah, um, thank you, uh, Diana. Uh, I just wanna add that uh, sometimes restrooms are not open. Uh, that doesn't mean they weren't cleaned. That doesn't mean they do not operate. Mm -hmm. Just that administration for some reason, uh, as uh, Sandra mentioned, um, locks them in certain areas for various mm -hmm. reasons, but it's not about a maintenance issue. I know it's not maintenance, um, but we'll I know that that's it. Yeah, we'll definitely address it because this is something that's been brought to our attention before Diana. So mm -hmm. we'll work with those schools to just make sure that we are giving appropriate access to the restrooms so students don't have to walk down mm -hmm. certain hallways or you know not have it readily available. Okay. Thank you for bringing it Thank back Thank you. Up. Yeah. And oh, go ahead, Karen. Yeah, sorry. One more question, just along mm -hmm. the lines of the, the bathrooms um, mm -hmm. and overall, you know, just safety and security at the schools. Um, I didn't hear any mention of the installation of any additional security cameras, which I thought was part of the plan for this year. Um, or is anybody able to speak to that? Um, we will, I think actually we have a plan and we can actually invite Ryan maybe to one of these meetings one day because we actually have to go out to bid. So what we did is we had proposed it for the budget. It then ended up getting approved as that extra that got approved by the mayor for the capital budget. Yeah. And then when we came back, we started to actually look at um, actual going out to bid. So the bidding process for that and actually making sure that we have a, the, the appropriate purchasing is happening right now. We had the initial assessment that told us how many cameras we would need. And that's what we used to create the budget request around it. 
So we could definitely invite um, Ryan Harold to come to one of the meetings and actually just give us an update of where are they? Were there any additional installed over the summer? I don't believe in the locations that we have. There were additional ones for locations that um, like the, the former literacy center that is now going to house NAOP, the Twilight Academy staff and those. So there's other sites that we had to install cameras for that we made sure that we, we have cameras in those places. But I don't think, Kara, we did the exact, um, the robust program that we wanted to. We weren't able to do it this summer. Okay. Yeah. I, I would like to get some more it. information on that because um, sure. I know that the bathrooms are one area that we have been talking about installing additional cameras to make Outside sure that we can keep, the bathrooms. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that we can keep those bathrooms open because I know that it's not a maintenance issue. It's a, it's a safety yeah. issue. Okay, thank you. I'll make it a priority. Thanks. Of course. If there are no additional comments for Bill, I, I really did wanna take the time to echo Bill's sentiments because our custodians really went above and beyond. And even when they finished one school, they would go to another school to go help out. And I think that they just really demonstrated how well they work as a team. And I, I applaud them for pulling together and making sure that we met a very rigorous um, timeline. But I also just wanna thank Rita who works in Bill's office. I want to thank George and I want to thank Bill because, you know, we were sitting in my office and I proposed to him these very, very short timelines and he made the plan work alongside George Sevek, who is just um, a superhero to all of us. And with that, I think I'm going to turn it over to Jim. Jim, are you ready thank to you, Sandra. go next? So thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Thanks. Sure, I'm going to, uh, and I'm going to turn it over to Mike uh, okay. and his team. Um, I think, what was the next item on the agenda? Was it the? Um, it wasn't some... the furniture, I believe, was the last item, but it, I don't think it matters. Oh, okay. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is going to take a little time, so I figured they'd go now. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mike? Mike, you're sorry, mind. sorry, sorry. Um, so first off, good evening, everyone. Um, tonight we have uh, the design team from Antonazzi Associates who designed all of the furniture in conjunction in conjunction with uh, Jenna Mastone, the principal at Cranberry, as well as uh, staff input. So for the past couple of months, we've been working on creating uh, the designs for all of the new furniture that will go into the new building when it's completed. Uh, looking at all the colors of the furniture, the functionality of all the furniture, and ensuring that all of it will work with the uh, the program at the new school when it's completed. So um, joining us, we have Lisa Yates from Antonazzi Associates, Lauren Williams, the interior designer from Antonazzi Associates, and uh, Mark D'Agostino from D'Agostino Associates, who designed all the technology for the new space. So I'll turn it over to Lisa and her team just to give us a brief presentation regarding regarding the furniture and, and also Jenna's Jenna's joined us as well and in support of everything that we've uh, we've created here. Okay, good evening everyone. You can see my screen, right? And my cursor. Yes. Excellent. So we're we're going to try to keep this quick and give you highlights um, as I'm sure you all know Cranberry Elementary School is already under construction. Um, and this is strictly about furniture and technology. So for by technology, some of it's built into the project. We're talking about network switches, phones, digital screens, visitor management, and charging stations for the tech. And Mark, um, as, as Mike was saying, Mark's here to answer any questions that you might have on that. And, uh, you know, first of all, um, and most importantly, we are on budget. So we're actually, this, this number is about $1,000 below our target budget, which is right around where we want to be. Um, we submitted with the agenda, we submitted more detailed cost estimates and some alternates. We've, we've built in a lot of contingency into these numbers because of the inflationary climate and some alternates so that we can make sure that uh, we can make fast decisions after we're bidding the work. And then 
These are the plans. You've seen them before, you know them well. These particular layouts show the furniture in the building. Um, we're we're going to go fairly quick tonight. Um, I will say that we spent a lot of time with Jenna and with the staff uh, tailoring everything to the way that they're going to use the school. And uh, our presentations to them went over an hour. We're going to we're going to try to keep this one like five minutes for you. So and you know, you're this is the main entrance to the school on the first floor. This is our admin wing here, our cafe, cafeteria, our gym with the performance platform. This is what we call the civic wing because it can be locked off. The first floor, this is the academic portion with the uh, learning commons library in the middle. And we have our pre-K over here, kindergarten over here, and then first and second grade also on this floor. And on the second floor, it's also primarily academic with third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. We have a science classroom, which is potentially swing space, also our resource classroom and more resource spaces here along this more narrow section of the building. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Lauren, our interior designer at Antonazzi, and she will take you through more room by room highlights of, of what's going on. Hi everyone. Um, so to start off, we have created a semi-standard because um, we also have done the Jefferson School. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of the furniture you've actually already seen when we presented for Jefferson. Um, and so we're kind of taking things that have worked well, lessons learned from that and applying it to this school. So um, for the first area is the pre-K classroom. So you can kind of see like a little 3D view of what the furniture is. So it's all height appropriate. Um, you know, they have climbers, play kitchens, tables, um, and everything like that within the space, um, cots that they can sleep on. They have the standard teacher's desk. They have a big book easel, which you can see here holds obviously the larger books and then a um, rug that every classroom will have. Okay. And then um, the, the kindergarten through second grade, we have, um, again, up top, we have the desks, the student desks, the student chairs, um, and then the cubbies. We have a, um, a easel that is actually for, you know, like their chart paper and things, but it does also have a marker board um, underneath it. Um, but every classroom in Cranberry does have a marker board on the in the classroom on attached to the walls. So this is not their primary marker board. We have the teacher's desk and teacher's chair and the rug and then um, an additional table for the students to gather at. And then the third through fifth grade, it's the same exact furniture. It's just at different heights. That's more appropriate to their sizes. Um, and it's the same thing, yep. And then this is a uh, rendering of an, the learning commons. Um, so you can kind of see just the general, how it's a mix of soft seating and tables. But if we go to the next page, we can see that these are the actual pieces of furniture. So um, on the left-hand side, we have the bookcases, uh, the circular bookcases. They're actually double-sided. Um, this image, for some reason, the manufacturer only has a single side. Um, and then you have the tables and chairs for the students to have like their classroom setting yet. And then there's a little bench for where the teacher, um, he'll have students that can pull up and work with him directly. We have a various soft seating um, from these low to the ground seats that are in the yellow up top, Lisa. Center, yep, they're low to the ground. Kids can climb on there, read books. Um, great for the various ages. We have the large round half circle. You actually have this um, at Jefferson as well. Um, it's a great piece that you can have, it has bookcases on the side. It has a table behind it that the stools pull up to, but then also students can sit in the front of it um, and work with that table. We have stools, um, small little upholstered stools that have the handles attached to them that students can drag it around and put where they need to go. Um, so it lets students collaborate more. We have the little leaflet, um, stools which you see like the little kid laying on um, various green colors and then we have the mitt chair which is shown with the red along the windows with a little side table that students can put books or things on okay and then in the music classroom we have various instrument storage the standards teachers desk um, additional storage such as cubbies the 
classroom rug and then the musical chair, stool and um, music stand. In the art classroom, we have um, biggest thing for them is various storage for the types of art that they have. So we have big open industrial shelving, um, drying racks, the flat files for different size paper, um, and then the standard student chair, the um, industrial um, table that can handle all the different types of things that are being used in an art classroom, and then the teacher desk. And then um, up on the second floor, we had various um, types of classrooms such as resource, um, other, you know, ELL, other types of classrooms. And within there we have standard teacher desk and chair, that um, easel that holds the chart paper as well as the marker board, the student desk, uh, student chair. Um, this, in these locations, we have um, half round tables so the students can kind of meet more collaboratively. And then they have additional storage of, you know, file cabinets and things like that, cubbies. And then some of the rooms are super long and they have the ability to be one long classroom for when the kids can all work together, but then it also has this screen that can help divide the classroom into two sections when they need to meet in smaller groups. And then in the cafeteria and teacher's lounge, um, the teacher's lounge has the table on the left, which is one long table that has a laminate wood top with a um, black base and the gray chairs that are actually seen at the table right there. And then on the right hand side is all the cafeteria furniture. So it's foldable tables, um, the orange individual student chairs, and then the buddy bench, you know, they are awarded, they get the ability to sit at the buddy bench. It's a nicer seating, it's upholstered um, in vinyl. So it's cleanable um, with the table right there as well. And then last, but I think this is last but not least, but you have the, breakouts and then you're, then we're uh, done. So in the administration suite, um, the, principal and site director have the tables on or the desks and chairs on the right with guest chairs and then um, additional storage. Um, the principal also has a round table that can hold four different chairs so they can have, she can have small meetings directly in her office. Um, but then attached to her office that everyone can um, or adjacent to her office that everyone can use is the conference room. And that is the example of the table right there. And then there's a credential <laughs> that holds whatever technology information that they need to hold and then also has like trash and things inside of it. And then last but not least is the breakout spaces. Upstairs on the second floor, um, there are two areas within the corridor that are called breakout spaces. And the idea is that when students need to work in small groups or different things, they can gather right out here and work. And in one area we have um, a round table with stools underneath that students can sit at. And then the second one is, yep, we have these lounge chairs with um, another table that they can sit at. So two different options within the same space. But and I think that's it. That's it. Um, I can stop sharing and ask for questions. I might have to, to start sharing again, depending on uh, what the questions are, but. Okay, so can you remind me, I know those desks look small for teachers. Where was the extra room for teachers to um, keep any extra personal items or storage for yeah. classes because you know how a lot mm -hmm. of teachers have their individual classrooms I know that yeah. they're going to be sharing spaces and things yeah so in in the actual classroom itself there's uh, 15 feet of millwork that has um, a lockable wardrobe that the teachers can lock their stuff in that individual room as well but then there are also staff lockers in the teacher's lounge so people can have stuff in there as well Right, and there's also within the millwork wall, there's another larger storage piece mm -hmm. that's uh, that's full height with double doors, which also locks. It's not necessarily for the teacher per se, but if you have a situation where you have sharing, that can be used. And sometimes we doubled up the the uh, the wardrobe depending on on how many teachers were using the space. But that right. was that was handled on the construction side primarily. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any questions? If I could just take the opportunity to make a comment, um, just appreciate all the work and the collaboration that has gone into this process. Um, we've, you know, as Lisa mentioned, have had several uh, presentations and opportunities for teachers who will be in the actual space to see and comment and make suggestions on uh, what they thought was going to work best for their style of teaching and their students. 
So really every decision has been very deliberate uh, and very purposeful and uh, the community is just so excited uh, for this project. So thank you to everybody on the team. Thank you, that's great to hear. Okay, so if we're done with this section, um, I need approval to move this to the full board. If there's no other questions, uh, let's, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> say I or raise your hand so we can move this to the full board. I don't see Colin. I think I lost Colin on my screen. Is he? Yeah, I think he might have dropped off. Okay, so that's unanimous. Sherelle, Kara, and myself, we're going to move the um, Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Looks Thank great. You Makes me want to go back to school. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun to work with the school too. It was great. Yeah, I can't it wait. It's a little walk. different, right, Kara, yeah. than when we were in school. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I can't I wait the for the tour. with tennis balls on legs. Yeah. <laughs> right, I want right. the tour soon. So, yeah. <laughs> looking forward to it. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Sandra. Okay. So, thank Who's you guys taking... so much. And, Jim, are you ready to give us your presentation or go through your report? Uh, yeah. We're talking about the monthly report, I believe. I believe. Because I don't, can you uh, see my screen? Okay, uh, Mike, do you want to start off? Mike? Are you there? My mouse, my mouse doesn't appear to be working as well as okay. it usually we does. My apologies. <laughs> um, over at the Jefferson School, uh, there, there, there wasn't a, a whole lot of work that went on this summer other than moving and bringing in the new furnishings into the building. Uh, some minor touch-ups were done and punch list items, but the building was relatively complete um, at the very beginning of the summer. Um, we did move all of the teachers' personal belongings and teaching materials over from the Ponus Lower School where they were temporarily housed and moved all of those items over to their new destinations. Um, teachers have been in there the past couple of weeks uh, unpacking their belongings and setting up the classrooms. So it's really exciting to see the space that we've been working on for the past, you know, two years really take shape and uh, be ready for the students to, to come. Um, also this summer, the building housed a, uh, a district uh, leadership retreat and it, it appeared that that event was uh, pretty successful. So, and everyone was uh, pretty envious of the new spaces. Um, the photo to your right there is the learning commons prior to all the furniture and teachers' belongings being delivered and the space, uh, the photo to the left is the new uh, cafetorium. Um, All set, any, any yeah. questions on Jefferson? Okay, we can move on. I think Cranberry is next. Uh, I'm sorry, Jim. I just wanna mention at Jefferson, currently we are about 75% in installing solar panels on the roof. So uh, okay. that will be complete probably just after the school year. Um, so over, over at Cranberry, it's been a, a, a busier summer over there in comparison. Uh, the old Cranberry field is basically no longer in existence and now there's a foundation for what will be the new Cranberry school. Uh, over, the, over the summer, uh, extensive site work was done in this area that you can see in the top panoramic photo. The entire uh, field was cleared. All of the utilities that were serving the existing Cranberry School were relocated as most of them ran through where the new school is being built. So new power and water were brought into the, into the existing building as well as to where the new building is being constructed. Um, as well as data and phone lines were, were completely rerouted. Um, all of that work has been completed over the summer, so it won't impact the upcoming school year. Um, it's a little difficult to see, but basically all of the uh, foundation walls have been completed at this point. Um, the lower photo is just a close up of uh, the foundation walls. Underground plumbing has been installed, conduit is being installed, and the contractor is looking to install the uh, 
slab that'll basically become the floor of the entire lower level of the building um, in, in a couple of weeks. All right, any questions on Cranberry? Okay, I think Norwalk High School is up next. Um, we're moving along with the, uh, Dan is on vacation, so I'm taking his place uh, tonight, uh, but we're moving along, uh, continue moving with the design. We uh, met with the state uh, two weeks ago uh, to review what they call the schematic design. Um, that went very well. Uh, we're approved and uh, moving forward with uh, design development at this time. Uh, we continue making final uh, tweaks uh, here and there uh, as uh, we're trying to fit all of the uh, program and requirements into this building. Um, but things are moving along very well. The, the design is really starting to come together. I'm kind of excited about how uh, we're seeing this come together. It's uh, uh, it's uh, quite impressive. Uh, any uh, questions regarding Norwalk High School? Is the intention still to break ground on this in May of 2023? No, no. The uh, breaking ground is scheduled for. Does that say that on here? No, um, it doesn't. That's that's my I think my memory or what what is the it was, correct date? I believe it's December of 2023, but I'm going to have to double check on okay. that. Okay. Actually, hang on. I'm sorry. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's been a while since I've since we've seen this, right? Yeah. And, and let me see. Yeah, it's December 2023. Yeah, December. December of 2023 currently. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. No problem. Okay, and South Norwalk Elementary School, we um, went out this summer for um, uh, issued an RFQ. Uh, for architectural services. We interviewed four firms uh, last Thursday uh, and issued an RFP to three of those firms and uh, the RFPs are due back tomorrow. Uh, so hopefully we'll have an architect selected uh, by tomorrow. We'll have to go through land use uh, and the common council for their approval, but um, we are uh, continuing to move forward with the South Norwalk School. We also have uh, out on the street right now is the RFQ uh, for construction management services as well. Um, that is anticipated to be uh, that process to be completed um, by mid to late September and we'll have a construction manager on board by early October. Any questions regarding South Norwalk School? Oh, we also closed on the property. So we, uh, the city now owns the property at one Meadow Street extension. Any questions regarding South Norwalk? No. I do have a, a question um, about the cleanup of the area. Of the property? Mm-hmm. Okay. So there, there were concerns, um, environmental concerns. Um, I, 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 I don't know if anybody forwarded it to you, but I sent um, money that the state has available, you know, for projects like that, for cleaning up properties or cleaning up the environmental um, issues. With yeah, we had a, uh, a phase two environmental site assessment done. And there's, th this is probably the cleanest site I've seen uh, on a, for a school project um, that I, since I've been involved in school construction projects, um, there's very little contamination on this site. No, 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 it's not the contamination. I think it's the air quality with like the trucks and different um, operations that are in the area. Okay. Um, I have to double check with Alan Lowe, but I think we did some air samples as well. Okay. That would be helpful to know. Okay. That, uh, my constituents particularly are very concerned. Okay, I'll look into that with Alan. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay. I think it brings us to the end of that item. Yes. 
So I'm a little confused since we didn't go in order here. It's so, the first item. It's the, the second item on the agenda after Bill Hodel. I'm sorry, that's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because all of a sudden it was like, because I'm looking at B and it was like, we discuss no. way more than what's on <laughs> we B. Can, but... We can blame Jim because uh, <laughs> we skipped we skipped the line so that uh, Lisa and her team could hop off. But yeah. um, it'll be the second item on the agenda. Okay, so now we have to approve, well, accept the state project to the full board. Is that what we're doing now? Is that for Naramec? The Naramec kitchen project? Yeah, it's, it says kitchen yep. and server edition. Yeah, so um, if anyone's looking for a background on this, you know, in order to close out one of these state mm -hmm. construction grant projects, uh, the state has a requirement that the uh, Board of Education accept the construction project as complete. So um, that that's basically what we're looking for here, the Board of Education's acceptance of that construction project as complete. Um, you know, all the kitchen and servery, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jim, was open for uh, the school's use last fall. Uh, no, actually, it was uh, in, uh, I think, February or March, we oh. had the issue with the okay. electrical uh, the circuit breakers. All right. And I I personally haven't heard anything. Um, Been in use. Is, is it working out well? Yes, from what I gather great. from um, the, the principal in our community, we haven't had any issues, Bill. Can you confirm that? Uh, yes, it's been in full use, the kitchen mm -hmm. and the cafeteria and the multi-purpose room so yes well then that sounds great so all in favor of did we lose Sherelle? oh no she's right there. i'm here i'm here i'm here, I'm here. <laughs> sorry <laughs> that's okay all in favor raise your hand and say aye okay that's unanimous Sherelle, cara and myself and with that being said i believe we are done for the evening, I don't show anything else on my agenda, right? Am I correct? That is it. All righty then. Well, thank you everyone. This was very informative and exciting and I'm looking forward to all these new projects and thank you for everybody because I know it's taken a lot of work, especially through the summer to get everything done um, so that the children can all go back into their schools. So with that being said, motion to adjourn. Sherelle, 